food system is a one trillion dollar industry. I mean, that's whether it's from the farm to McDonald's. A huge amount of resources within that food system are geared entirely towards the production of meat, which feeds the minority of the population on the planet. I think the number in, in round terms, about 29-30% of the surface of the planet is land. 50 million square kilometres are dedicated to our food system. And of that 50 million square kilometres that are dedicated to the food system, 40 million square kilometres, so 80% of that available land that is dedicated to our food system is dedicated to meat production. So we grow wheat, we grow barley, we grow soy, we grow all these, other, all these different crops that then get fed to the cattle to grow. So think about that. I'm actually using arable land to grow crops that I then go and take to feed to a cow. So I'm going through multiple different systems to get to a product that we would then eat. I have to expend energy, I have to expend water to develop that cow so it can be harvested to feed us. An average five minute shower is about 50 litres of water. So if you put that into context again, 10 minutes, 154, it's about a six hour shower to actually have the water to produce one kilogram of protein, which is 12 sirloin steaks. Which if you're going out with all your buddies and your friends and you're going out for a meal and there's a group of you, you could do that in, in, a, in a single night out. And that's, that's the kind of impact that we have. And now is the time to do something about it using some of the, the new technologies that are coming through that are driving an alternative protein and an alternative food system. Specifically, we're talking about alternatives to meat and meat products. So there are, there, 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 there are five alternatives that we can talk about. Now there are whole aisles dedicated to plant-based foods, which are Things that look and potentially taste like meat, but are made from plants and plant proteins. Most people have seen corn. You know, that's a global product. It's manufactured very close to where we're based here on Teesside. They don't claim to be meat. They're not meat. It's, an, it's a genuine alternative protein. At CPI, we've been running a project called SusFeed. One of the opportunities we have is to produce alternative proteins from, uh, from microbial sources to displace that soy meal as animal feed. These are microbial proteins that are grown in a fermenter. That's fantastic. We reduce all the emissions associated with soy production and the associated deforestation of the Amazon rainforest and so on and so forth. The second important thing is the microbes that we're using in the SUSFEED project consume methane and carbon dioxide, two of the most significant greenhouse gases uh, that, that you'll hear people talk about. The third source is really alternative proteins uh, that are things like insects. Now, some people in the West might squirm and, and it's not for them, but the reality is what you would have is just a, a, a white flower. And if I put it on a plate in front of you with an equivalent amount of plain flour or self-raising flour that was derived from wheat, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. The next thing, is really alternative meat or animal-based products. So think about dairy, think about eggs. Egg is, is a common ingredient in a vast array of foods, so cakes and breads and all sorts of different things have eggs in it. And it's the physical properties of the egg that gets used to help form as an ingredient in the formulation of some of the recipes and, and products. So they're now at a point where they can actually replicate egg albumin out of a fermenter. So we no longer need necessarily the 42 million birds producing the 11 billion eggs per year in the UK. The final one is the moonshot. This is uh, what they call cultured meat. Cultured meat is a direct replica. A sample is taken of the animal and that is put into laboratory, laboratory conditions that are you know, very tightly controlled and effectively it is grown. The animal cell replicate. So think of it as a, a beef cell that forms a sirloin steak or a chicken cell that forms a chicken fillet. So you can grow the cells, and then the challenge is in the technology to actually form the cells into something that resembles the food product that we would normally eat. Because meat mush isn't very appetizing to an awful lot of people.
it takes something like three and a half percent of a population to change, to drive momentum, to drive a societal change. So how do you get society to do the right things with a minimal amount of energy and inertia? And if you look at it from two aspects, you have personal health and you have planetary health. How do you combine making the right decision that has a double whammy of both personal health and planetary health? And by making those decisions and getting societies to start demanding those products, uh, which enable the providers and the corporates to provide those products to innovate and incorporate the new solutions into their markets, uh, will see us safely and securely on the journey to net zero by 2050. One of the biggest challenges that we have is the time it takes to do things. Uh, there's some very ambitious goals set for 2030 and 2050. And the concern I have is that people don't realize that we need to act today to ensure that those solutions are in place for 2050, because some of them are a technical solution. So we shouldn't let perfection be the enemy of the good. When what we need to do in the next 10 to 15 years is establish the good, which is re-establishing supply chains, re-establishing the markets that we, and, and the capabilities to service those markets within the UK, that we can then build on from the mid 2030s onwards to hit perfection. And that's only enabled through CPI's journey over the last 15 years of understanding. It's not just about technology innovation and technology development. You have to be able to marry a pull from the market with a financial cash flow that enables that technology to flow through to get from concept to commercialization as quickly as possible because it is all about time to market and therefore time to impact. What we do is we help join the dots and bring together the different resources within CPI to ensure that we can deliver the most significant impacts that we can to both planetary and personal health through combinations of healthcare, medicines, uh, sustainable materials, alternative food systems, and hopefully in the long term, help the country and the, and the globe meet net zero targets for 2050.